All right, let's open our Bibles to Nehemiah chapter 11. Nehemiah chapter 11. We only got through two verses last week as we began this chapter. Let's pick up at verse 13, and we're going to read down through verse 14. Now these are the chief of the province that dwelt in Jerusalem, but in the cities of Judah dwelt everyone in his possession in their cities, to wit, which means that is, Israel, the priests, and the Levites, and the Nethanims, and the children of Solomon's servants. And at Jerusalem dwelt certain of the children of Judah, and of the children of Benjamin. Of the children of Judah, Athaliah, the son of Uzziah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Amariah, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Mahalaleel, of the children of Perez. And Maasiah, the son of Baruch, the son of Colhose, the son of Hez Hezaiah, the son of Adaiah, the son of Joarib, the son of Zechariah, the son of Shaloni. All the sons of Perez that dwelt at Jerusalem were four hundred threescore and eight, four hundred sixty-eight. And these are the sons of Benjamin, Salu, the son of Meshulam, the son of Joed, the son of Pedaiah, the son of Koleiah, the son of Maasiah, the son of Ithiel, the son of Jesaiah, and after him, Gabai, Salai, nine hundred twenty and eight. And Joel, the son of Zikri, was their overseer, and Judah, the son of Shenua, was second over the city. Of the priests, Jedai, the son of Joarib, Jachin, Seraiah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Meraoth, the son of Ahitub, was the ruler of the house of God. And their brethren that did the work of the house were eight hundred twenty and two, and Adaiah the son of Joram, uh, the son of Peliah, I'm sorry, Peliah, the son of Amzi, the son of Zechariah, the son of Pasher, the son of Malchiah, and his brethren, chief of the fathers, two hundred forty and two, and Amishai, the son of Azareel, the son of Asahai, Ahasai, excuse me, the son of Meshulamoth, the son of Immer, and their brethren, mighty men of valor, an hundred twenty and eight, and their overseer was Zabdiel, the son of one of the great men. Uh, once again, we've come to an exciting, riveting part of the book of Nehemiah. I see you're all on the edge of your seats, and the anticipation builds with each verse. Nevertheless, the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. We have a, another list of names here who are only recorded here and, of course, recorded in eternity. The Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Psalm 119, verse 89. Um, these names happen to be connected with God's Son. So God considers them worth recording. Um, these people became famous because they were connected with a, with a work and with individuals that foreshadow the building or the a second advent of God's Son. Uh, they say in the world, any friend of so-and-so's is a friend of mine. And God sees it that way. God's Son will sit on the rightful throne of King David in his reign one day. And that will be preceded by him, along with his glorious saints, or glorified saints, of which you and I will be a part, trampling through a Muslim graveyard outside the eastern gate of the old city of Jerusalem when he enters in. Let me run you to a few verses to remind you that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to have the last laugh. In fact, that's what the Bible says in the Psalm chapter 2. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. But go, um, go forward to the book of Joel, Joel chapter 2.
Joel 2, and just two verses there, verses 10 and 11. The earth shall quake before them, that is, the glorified saints. The heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Go forward to the book of Revelation, chapter 19. Revelation 19. And let's read verses 13 to 15. Speaking of Christ, verse 13, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Go back to, to Nehemiah, just uh, a few chapters earlier, Nehemiah 2, verse 20. Let's go back there, Nehemiah 2, verse 20. Then answered I them, and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us, therefore we, are, we his servants will arise and build, but ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Those are the non-Jews trying to thwart and stop the building of the city once again. And then Zechariah 14, near the end of the Old Testament, the book of Zechariah, chapter 14. And notice there verse 21. <clears throat> Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seethe therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. That is the descendants of Ishmael, all the Arab peoples who have aligned themselves against Israel and uh, the state of Israel in modern times uh, for centuries. Uh, will be banned. They will be kicked out. They will be destroyed. God's going to, Christ is going to, like I say, he'll have to trample through their Muslim cemetery on the outside the eastern gate uh, in order to go in through the eastern gate when he returns. Uh, he won't care. He won't care about the graves of uh, unbelievers who were anti uh Israel all of their lives and who have no interest or love for the Lord Jesus Christ when you think that the Lord Jesus Christ is an absolute is going to be an absolute sovereign they ought to make you tremble uh, and with and also grateful that you know him as your savior and um, read Joel chapter 2 verses 1 through 11 sometime and see the description of of the glorified saints who will comprise his army one day and uh, I think you'll you'll take away that fact that he won't care about those who have rebelled against him or uh, uh, blasphemed him all of their lives or tried to destroy and uh, ruin and bring evil and harm and uh, bloodshed and warfare against the Jew because those are still God's chosen people. Um, the tenth of the people, which we discussed last time, who will be cannibalized by the man of sin, the son of perdition, uh, come from Israelites, according to verse 3. Those were Jews who had been part of the kingdom of Israel to the north before Babylon came and changed their futures. Judeans, those from Judah, uh, Levites, Nephinims, those were servants of the Levites. Uh, all those who were dwelling 
outside the city, and also priests. And then the list beginning in verse 4 are dwellers within Jerusalem, including priests, according to verse 10, and their brethren, verses 12 through 14, and some more Levites, verses 15 through 18, and the list of all those runs really through verse 19. Now let's read the rest of this chapter. Actually, technically, I'm doing the reading, and you're just sitting there quietly following along, hoping I mess up. I'm just kidding you. But let's, let's continue verses 15 through 36. Also of the Levites, Shemaiah the son of Hashab, the son of Azrakam, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Buni, and Shebathai, and Jozebad, of the chief of the Levites, had the oversight of the outward business of the house of God. And Mataniah, the son of Micah, the son of Zabdi, the son of Asaph, was the principal to begin the thanksgiving in prayer. And Bakbukiah, the second among his brethren, and Abda, the son of Shamua, the son of Galal, the son of Jeduthun, all the Levites in the holy city were 204 score and four, 284. Moreover, the porters... Akub, Talman, and their brethren that kept the gates were in hundred seventy and two. And the residue of Israel, of the priests and the Levites, were in all the cities of Judah, every one in his inheritance. But the Nethanims dwelt in Ophel, and Ziba and Gispa were over the Nethanims. The overseer also of the Levites at Jerusalem was Uzi, the son of Benai, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Micah, of the sons of Asaph, the singers were over the business of the house of God. For it was the king's commandment concerning them that a certain portion should be for the singers, due for every day. And Pethahiah, the son of Meheshabel, of the children of Zerah, the son of Judah, was at the king's hand in all matters concerning the people. And for the villages, with their fields, some of the children of Judah dwelt at Kirjath Arba, and in the villages thereof, and at Dibon, and in the villages thereof, and at Kabziel, and in the villages thereof, and at Jeshua, and at Moladah, and at Bethphilet, and at Hazar Shual, and at Beersheba, and in the villages thereof, and in Ziklag, and at Mekona, and in the villages thereof, and at Enrimon, and Zariah, and Jarmuth, Zenoah, Adullam, and in their villages at Lachish, and the fields thereof at Azekah, and in the villages thereof. And they dwelt from Beersheba unto the valley of Hinnom. The children also of Benjamin from Geba dwelt at Michmash and Aijah and, and Bethel, and in their villages. And at Anathoth, Nob, Ananiah, Hazor, Rama, Gitaim, Hadid, Zeboim, Nebalat, Lod, and Ono, the valley of craftsmen, and of the Levites were divisions in Judah and in Benjamin. Inside Jerusalem, verse 22, uh, is said, was said to be singers, the sons of Asaph, who along with um, Eli uh, Ethan and another named he um, Heman, organized the sounding of cymbals and music and praises to the Lord whenever the sacrifices were being offered in King David's day. And of course, when they brought the ark out of the house of Obed-Edom to Jerusalem, prior to that, they also were organized to sing, mentioned in 1 Chronicles 15. The king, mentioned verse 24, would be the king of Persia. There was no king reigning over the house of Israel at the time. So Pethahiah, mentioned in verse 24, was a liaison, a Persian ambassador between the returning Jews and the king of Persia. And there's not a whole lot of action taking place, a long list of names. God considers these names worth recording because they had some part to play in the rebuilding of the city and the city walls and the protection of the city. Um, the verse also mentioned... 
Where is that? The verse also mentioned porters. Verse 19. I didn't want to overlook them. Um, <clears throat> it says in verse 19, their brethren that kept the gates. So they were assigned to watch the city gates. Christ gave the essential definition, John chapter 10. He said, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, um, and the sheep hear his voice, and so forth. Verse John 10, verses 2 and 3. So the porters were the gatekeepers to the gates of the city, also doorkeepers. In Psalm 84, verse 10, the Bible says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. So something that seems to be a minor, menial task, open and closing the door, letting people in and out, not much uh, excitement or thrill or glory in that occupation, and yet to do that, uh, rather than to be uh, the company of sinners and wicked people, is much more preferable for the saint of God. And it should be for us as well. Whatever minor, trivial, what seems to be insignificant job uh, we can do for the Lord Jesus Christ, we should rejoice in it that we have something to do. 